Well, hey there, and welcome to the very first episode of my Redstone Tutorials, where today we're going to talk about the most, well, one of the most important things in Redstone, and that's Redstone Dust. It's uh, pretty straightforward, but it can get convoluted and complicated if you let it. So to do this, I have actually started by setting up a large array of things, and these things all do the same thing but different ways and for different reasons and that is power redstone dust okay so redstone dust is basically like a wire you just place it down and it can connect things together and depending on how it's lined up to something and we'll go over that in a little more detail down the road but if it's connected it will give you some ability to um make the different redstone components work, right? So there's a lot of ways to power it. The simplest, redstone torch. Redstone torch touching redstone will give you a signal, and that signal will be 15 in length. Okay, so 15 blocks from your source. And if we look at our F3 screen here, um, on the right-hand side, in that third block of things, you can actually see a section that says power. Right now it's power 15, so that's the strongest signal I can have. If I go down, it's 14, 13, and it'll go down by one all the way out until we get to the 15th with a power source of one. Now, if you need it to go longer than that, you can use a repeater. And repeaters have other uses, but we'll get into those in their very own video. Um, but you can just throw one down and then continue your redstone line, and you'll get an additional 15 in length which will give you as long as you need, right? The problem with this is a redstone torch is always powered. Um, well, unless you power the torch. But that, well, we'll go over that with some mechanical stuff later. Um, but for all intents and purposes, a redstone torch is basically always on, which means it's always touching redstone, which means that line's always on. So basically you turn it on once and that's all there is to it. And sometimes... That's what you need, but most of the time it's not. And a lot of times we want a way to turn things on and off. So we have the lever, which once again, if we come all the way down here, gives us a signal strength of 15. So we get the same amount of power out of a lever as we do a torch, and it gives you an on-off option. Now we have two different things. We have stone buttons and we have wood buttons. Now they function basically the same. But if you notice, the wood button holds on to the signal longer than the stone button does, right? But it just gives you one quick pulse. So if you need to kick something over just real fast or something like that, these are both good options. The next, we have pressure plates. And pressure plates work in a couple of different ways. Um, here you can see this is a wooden pressure plate, and all of the woods work the same way. If you stand on it, it will give you a signal, and it'll stay as long as you're standing on it. You can throw something on top of it, too, like I just did. Oop, missed. <laughs> there we go. And we'll get a signal until this item despawns, plus that little half a second or so of lag time. Now, this one is the light-weighted pressure plate. And basically, it just gives you a signal. It's a lot weaker. So if you need something a little tighter space, you know, this will work. We can throw an item on it. It'll work as well. Stone pressure plate has to have a player, a mob, an entity, something like that on. So items that get dropped on it, not going to do anything. Um, and then you got your gold pressure plate here, which is a little funny. So it'll basically count how many different kinds of things are on it. See, the signal strength is going up by one every time it gets a new item. So, you know, you get that and you go all the way down. Nice and neat. Now for this one, I need water. Glorious water. Uh, oh, it's probably in. Oh, wait, no. This one brewing. Water bottle. Boom. So a cauldron. Um, and there's a lot of other things. Chests, all kinds of stuff. But you can use them in combination with the comparator. If the state of the item can change. So, like, when you put items in a chest, it gets more full, so it changed. Or when we add water to a uh, cauldron, it increases, right? 
So every time I put some more water in there, it goes up by one. You can have a maximum of three. So if you need a specific signal strength of three for some reason, a cauldron, good way to do it, right? But uh, we'll go over more of what can interact with the comparator in a future episode specifically for the comparator. Um, but the long story short, if it has more than one state for the item, it can, in fact, give you a signal. Now, another fun one, um, <laughs> and this is a, another way to power, is we can shoot a note block. And when we hit it, we get a signal. Boom. So if you want to make fun different kinds of games and stuff, you can do that with your uh, target blocks. Now, this one's a little hard to see. You can just barely notice it as I'm opening and closing on the left. This is not a normal chest. This is a trapped chest. And you make it with a chest and a tripwire hook, I believe. Better else it's you make a chest with a tripwire hook in the middle of it. Either way, it's in your recipe book. Um, and it will give you some uh, signal off of it, you know. A lot of people just use these for like booby traps or something <laughs> or alarm systems when people are in their bases. So that's a good one. Uh, lecterns with a book on it. Now, if you look to the left there, when I turn the pages, it gives me a brief redstone signal. So boom, another fun one, the observer. I'm just using a note block here. You can use a lot of different blocks, but anytime something changes in front of an observer, it sends off a signal behind it right and in this case I'm just tuning the note block and we can go all the way through the series so boom now pressure plates boom they will interact with redstone items whether you have redstone dust or not ah perfect the sun setting this daylight sensor and it has two modes it has night mode and it has day mode as your sun travels through the sky, you get different levels of light throughout the day. And right now, we're getting very close to very dark. Okay, so if you look, I've only got a signal strength total of three. Oh, now it's two as it's getting darker. If I go the other way, it's going to get stronger because it's seeing that it's darker, right? So it toggles on and off. If you have something you want to do very specifically during a time of day, or at a certain time of day every day, you can figure out how much signal strength you get and kick it off, kick off your system or whatever based off of it. A lot of people will use this uh, for things like sugarcane and bamboo farms that they don't want running nonstop. They just want it to harvest once a day. This is a good way to kick off your system. Or, um, oh, another fun one, actually. Hold on. Redstone lamp and a daylight sensor. Let's see, I believe it'll work like that. Oh, but I need to turn it to night mode, right? Yeah, there we go. So now it's on night mode. When it gets dark, it sends out a signal and it automatically turns on your redstone lamps for you. So you want a cute little uh, design for a uh, lamp or something like that. You know, this is a good way to do it, actually. You know, we'll take a, we'll take some crimson fence posts here. Uh, let's just make it two. No. no. We'll go three high. We're feeling dangerous. Throw a redstone lamp on top of there. Daylight sensor on night mode. And bam. You've got yourself a cute little setup. Or uh, we could have, let me think. Boom, 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 boom. Turn it to night mode. Now you see they're not turning on because they're not attached. But if I run redstone dust on top of them, now I've got a multi-directional lamp. Right? Right? So, you know, there's, there's kind of some neat things. Now, if I set my time today... Oh, bam! Now that it's daytime, the lights automatically turn off. Or if I set that to day mode, then it'll stay on. You know, so whichever way you want to go. But this is a good way to get yourself some street lamps and stuff going on and all of that. But really, the big thing you need to know is the more 
signal you get off of something, the longer stretch your redstone dust can send it, all the way up to a maximum of 15, unless you throw a repeater in, at which point you get an additional 15, no matter what the signal strength going into the repeater is. So, just for example, I can come back here, and we'll just throw down a whole bunch of redstone until it stops glowing. There we go, stops glowing right there. If we come over here, same level. So it's always 15 off of a repeater. And it doesn't matter how much juice you do or do not give it. And that's how you do a lot of the wiring for redstone. Now there's other ways to do things these days. Um, redstone dust is not required for everything, but it is the fundamental wiring for all things redstone. And there are other ways to power it. Um, if you make yourself a creative world, actually, um, you can come in, you get this whole menu with all of the items in here, and you can see all of the things that exist. Uh, actually, you know, just for the laws. <laughs> Boop. Let's see. Want to remote detonate TNT? Always fancy those switch in the old westerns? Bam! <laughs> right. So there's a lot of things that you can do, but you can activate stuff that way. And it can be pistons, whatever. But this creative menu will show you a whole bunch of different stuff. And as far as in the redstone area itself is concerned, a redstone block a torch, a comparator, do, 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 do. the lectern, but only if it has a book and quill with something written on it that you can turn the page, your target block, your lever, your daylight sensor, your trap chest, your tripwire hook. Uh, if you put string on these, when you go through the string, you need a pair of them side by side. In fact, I'll set that up here in a minute um but those um and then your buttons your pressure plates will give you all of the power options that you have for the most part oh and observers all right for the sake of example here i think i can just oh it has to be on the side of a block all right so i can put this on the side of the block and then i can use string to attach them like this, okay? Now, do, 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 do. we'll throw down some redstone dust, and when something goes through the string, it'll light up. So this is a good way for like booby trap detection or, um, you, you know, or booby trap setting, all kinds of things like that. Um, and another one that'll power stuff, I guess I didn't set it up because it, it's whatever. A redstone block will give you your full length 15 power level as well. Because right there we're... Am I further than 15? How much did I blow up? Oh, 15's right here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, 15. Um, hmm. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't blow stuff up like that, guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but lots of uses for redstone and knowing how to wire it up or what wiring options you have available is very important when it comes to a lot of this. So with that, um, I think that pretty much covers everything. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer and clarify anything that you need some help with. But really, this one I think is fairly straightforward. It really is just a matter of power source, and there's a lot of different kinds of power source. Lights up your redstone. Depending on what the power source is and how it's set up, it'll bring your signal out a really long way. And once it gets to wherever it's going or whatever you have it hooked up to, then it'll make other stuff happen. And we'll get to some of that other stuff in future episodes. 
Um, and we'll go through, we'll build all kinds of machines. We'll build basic flying machines. We'll build several different versions of auto smelters, detectors, all kinds of things that'll give us a lot of options on what we can do with stuff. But anyway, I appreciate you stopping by to check out what I've got going on here. And I hope that you learned something. If you did and you want to keep learning, hey, keep an eye on this channel as I'll be uploading these videos daily so that I can keep showing everyone all of the magic that is redstone. <laughs> all right. Bye till next time.